Today we're going to look at the top 10 times that the Animorphs stole some form of flying craft owned by the Yerks. Now, yes, of course, this is a fun video. This isn't going to be entirely serious, but it was something that happened quite a lot in this series. And we're going to go into the top 10 examples. Now, how am I defining top 10? Not necessarily by how much I thought it was a good scene or a bad scene or, or anything like that. It's basically, I'm ranking them based on how no, how, how big they were, how epic they were, whether that's good epic or bad epic, how big an impact it had and how memorable those, uh, those moments were. So we've certainly got a top 10 uh, and there were a few more because it, it did happen a few times. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into number 10, the, one of the lesser impactful times that the Animorphs stole some form of vessel from another alien race. I said Yerks earlier, but it's not just the Yerks, right? It comes from book 36, The Mutation. So at number 10 in this list, it is the Animorphs stealing the Sea Blade, sort of stealing it, which is why it's quite low on this list, okay? So they've gone into the world of the Nartek. They've been chasing this craft called the Sea Blade and Visser 3 was on that and a bunch of his minions, okay? And they get taken by the Nartex, both the Seablade and the Animorphs. And by the end of the book, the crew of the Seablade have been dealt with by the Nartex, apart from Visser 3, of course, because he can morph, escaped them. So it's just Visser 3 down there on the Yerk side. And of course, as happens many times on this list, this ship is practically unguarded, okay? So they've got this thing docked and the animals just decide, right, let's morph, battle morph and just charge onto the sea blade. They get in, slam the door shut, fight them off and then the viscer turns up, okay? And they do control the sea blade. So technically they did take it, even though Viscer 3 was there, they were sort of in control. Yeah, this is why this is quite low on the list, but that is technically a time they took an opposing forces flying craft even though it technically swam. No, it did fly because it flew and whatever, it's number 10 on this list, moving on. Number nine comes from the beginning, not the answer, which is, this is part of a double book. It comes from number 54, the beginning. And we'll be seeing this book again later, <laughs> a couple of times. Three times in a single book, they steal some sort of flying craft, okay? And I think the least notable one came, was the last of the three in this book. And that was when the Animorphs took the Rachel. The Rachel, they named once they took it, it was just a, a Yerk fighter that the Andalites had taken and were hold that they they docked somewhere in space just outside of Earth's atmosphere. Okay. And this was all done with help from Prince Kaysath, who we find at the end of the beginning and had quite an impact in that last storyline as they search for Axe and track down the one. So this one is pretty straightforward because they had to steal another craft in order to steal this one. So it's a bit less impactful. There's not much there because yeah, the more impactful one comes later in this list of, for obvious reasons. This one is they just go up there and jump on board and sail off with this thing. Sail being not the best word, but there you go. <laughs> Basically, Prince Kaysaf made it so that it was easily stealable. And that's what they did. They flew up there in their stolen ship and stole that ship. And off they go to the great beyond at the very end of the series. That's number nine. Number eight, and we have the Helmicrons in this list, and not for the not for the last time. It comes in book 42, The Journey, a pretty terrible book all round. And I think this moment is no, notable for the fact of how terrible it is. So the Helmicrons have gone into Marco's body. And so the, and they abandon their ship, of course, they abandon their ship because why not? Everyone seems to abandon their ships in this universe. And so the animals pick up this ship 
And th that's basically them stealing it. They've now got it because the Hellcrums have abandoned it. And Axe uses basically a pair of tweezers to fiddle around with the knobs on this minute little ship. If you want to watch me dissect that madness, go watch my review of book 42. But he's there dissecting this little ship and says, oh, if you just press that little button there, it activates the shrink ray. Oh, fucking, I don't know. And Marco uses that to shrink the animal so they can go into his body. Technically, they stole the Helmicron ship, which is why it's on this list. And it's number eight on this list because, yes, it's notable for how bad it is, but in the grand scheme of things, who gives a damn? It's book 42. So that's number eight on the list. Number seven comes from book 46, The Deception. And you'll notice in this video there's quite a lot of repeats because this one, like other books shows up later again in in this list they, they seem to steal aircraft and spacecraft in in uh phases so they go through a long phase of oh we don't need to steal any craft now and then suddenly it's bang 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 craft 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 steal 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 don't know why that's the sign for steal but so the, the one in this one that comes first is the first time that they steal a craft and what they've done is they've morphed fighter pilots, it's a big thing in this book, and they go up to, to an airbase and walk on and fly off. Hey Fluffer, Fluffer McKitty, my new cat. Oh, and do I hear a Tiggles as well? There you are, hi Tiggles. Stop fighting. Not quite used to each other yet. They tolerate each other, they tolerate each other. No, no scuffles. She just hisses a bit at him. Typical bloody woman. Anyway, yeah, so they've morphed these fighter pilots and obviously because it's just how it happens in this series, Axe knows how human technology works because he's super clever and he's, his race is advanced, so of course he knows how all human stuff works. Pfft. Don't even bother questioning that, okay? So they get in and then they fly off. They've stolen a fighter from an airbase. Yeah, it's just... <sighs> It happens a lot, okay? This is number seven on the list. We'll see you again later. Number six comes from the book before that one, book 45. I told you that these things come in, they come in uh, punctuated phases. But this is the one, I'm actually gonna bring up another book here, okay? This was close to being on the list, book five, The Predator. And there's a specific reason why it's not, because they failed. At the start of the series in book five, they tried to steal a yurt craft and failed. And it was the only time they ever failed. But what's notable about this one is that in this book, they called down a bug fighter. And obviously, because it was a weird signal, the yurks realized, we got to prepare for this because something weird's going on. And they surrounded this landed bug fighter and took the animals, okay? So that's how it happened in book five. Enter book 45. 40 books later, and the animals do basically the same thing. They'll, they call down a bug fighter using their own made technology. And do the Yerks have, have they prepared this time? No. They have basically the exact same scenario because in book five, there's a hawk bajir. He comes out, looks around and gets trapped by the animals. That's when the rest of the Yerks descend on them. In this one, there's two hawk bajir. They just sort of stumble out, freaking, I don't know. By the way, I got my, my Drake on being put together. Needs painting. They sort of walk around, oh, what the frick do I shoot here? What, what, what the bloody hell called this? It might be one of those traps again. Uh, never mind, don't call in reinforcements. And then the animals tie them up and take the ship and fly off into the ocean. And that leads to the eventual Deus Ex bug fighter scene, which was in my list of one of the worst moments of the series. So this book is quite notorious. Not a very good book, but yeah. The, the, this is notable because it just goes to show how incompetent the Yerks are. They just, they can't figure out something that they'd figured out 40 books ago. So yeah, piece of shit, you're six on the list. Number five comes from The Extreme, book 25, another Marco book. And this comes near the end. So they're in the, the tundra, freaking ice everywhere and they've been attacked by the Vember, and they come across this Yurk base, and they sneak in, and as per usual, there's nobody guarding this Yurk ship that's docked here. And so they come in, run aboard, because, and nobody's there, of course, and then they use it to fly away. 
they're being chased by the Visser in one of his ships. So this is the only time that they've taken a, a vessel, the Animorphs, and then they program it to self-destruct, jump out, and that's how they get away from Visser 3, because, oh, Visser, Visser 3, look, the ship exploded. Ah, they must be dead then, ha ha ha. And yeah, relatively clever by the animals, complete stupidity by Visser 3. Um, but yeah, it's quite noticeable, it's quite a cool little scene, actually. It's one of the only times where stealing a Yerk vessel has actually felt somewhat more genuine, except for the fact that they weren't guarding the ship, of course, because... You know, if, you, if you've ever been to a, a naval dockyard, try finding a, a naval ship that's just left unattended. Try it. You ain't gonna have much luck. Then again, when we're talking about spacecraft, it's more akin to, like, fighter planes, I suppose, okay. So in that case, you're still not gonna find many large aircraft that are just open and unattended. You're not. But it happens a lot in this series. Anyway, that was number five from The Extreme. Number four, and we welcome back book 54, The Beginning. And this is the one that leads into the one that we saw earlier in the list when they took the Rachel. And again, this one is also set up by Prince Kaysath. So Mendrash has come down with Prince Kaysath. And the whole point of Mendrash coming to see Jake was because Kazath wanted to save Axe but he wouldn't get prior approval from the Andalite military, so he did it in an underhanded sort of way, using the Animorphs. And part of the plan was to arrange so that a certain Andalite shuttle, that's all it's called, an Andalite shuttle, is in the desert somewhere, guarded by some Andalites, and the Animorphs would come in, knock the Andalites out, and steal that vessel. Uh, and that plan worked, and it was actually a really cool moment um, that plays into what I do with my fan fiction because there's a whole lot of stuff with Prince Kasaf that I haven't actually quite gotten into in my fanfic series. It's sort of a, an in the background thing until later on, but the whole Prince Kasaf and like military underhandedness and weirdness coming into play. It's all sort of set up by this scene here, which is why I really like it. And it's also the only time that we see the Animorphs stealing a ship from the Andalites, from what I remember. Yeah, that was pretty cool, made a change, and they actually did it in a reasonable way, because the Andalites were there guarding it. The only reason they got basically beaten up was because Prince Kasaf had arranged it to be so. It actually makes sense. There's a path from A to B there. It's not like the other books where it's just, oh, there was an unguarded ship. Let's just jump on board and lock the doors. There's a lot more thought behind this one, and that's why it ranks quite highly on this list. But it's not the highest from this book. That one comes later. Number three on the list, we welcome back uh, book 46, The Deception. And it's very similar because they steal an F-14. Yeah, F-14 uh, Tomcat. And it's very similar to how it was at the start of the book because that was an F-16 the last time we looked at this book. It was an M-16 at an airbase. The reason this one ranks considerably higher is because not only did they steal this fighter from the military, especially when there's a fight going on, it's, it's even worse in that regard. But what's even worse is that the F-14 has a nuclear, nuclear weapon on it. Yeah, by this point in the book, The Deception, it had gone full Book 37, The Weakness. It just made no sense. It was completely ridiculous. And I think that's why it's so notable. They just steal a fighter with a nuclear bomb on it. You know, oh, the antics we get up to, haha. <laughs> yeah, it's just notable for how bizarre and rubbish it is but it's only three on this list. What's at number two, do you think? You may have guessed this one. It comes in book 37, The Weakness, the book that's in pieces, that's been sellotaped back together. They steal a private jet. Now, granted, it's not a military vehicle, okay? And it may be more reasonable that it's not at being attended. I mean, there are guards nearby, but what the animals do, instead of, you know, morphing and flying into this thing, they decide to stay in their own bodies, climb a chainmail fence, and run across the airfield, <laughs> being chased by guard dogs who then suddenly vanish and just walk in, lock the door, and then Axe drives it off, turns around a deer on the 
aircraft, putting the whole mission in jeopardy. It was just f this, but bye. Again, fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> but not only that, they fly the fucker into a building. These were the days prior to 9-11, by the way. <laughs> you are... Uh, uh, <sniffs> Bye. Every time I touch it, I end up throwing it. Little shit. But yeah, that's notable for just how... It puts the last one, but number three, the deception where they got the nuclear bomb. It makes that look normal. This... Let's just get you out the way. That was number two, okay? Now, before we go to the big number one, and if you've been paying attention to this video, you already, you might as well just freaking bring it up now, because I've already told you it's going to be in the beginning. Um, before we get to that particular example, let's look at three examples that didn't quite make this video. The bonus ones. And for, in no particular order, we got from book 11, The Forgotten, there was a bug fighter that crash landed into some store and then animals sneak in uh, as flies, if I remember correctly, and steal it. And that's when they hit a Sario rip and there's a, there's a forest somewhere and shenanigans ensue. Um, I, this isn't in the top 10 because it's not that notable. Um, the bug fighter was crash landed, so it's a bit more reasonable that they would be able to steal it. It was being guarded. They did morph, so it's not noticeable for being atrociously badly written. So it's not really notable for that. Yeah, it's just it's just another example of them stealing uh, an alien spacecraft. So yeah, it's another example there. And then we've got from the sacrifice. So not the Mallard one, not the absolute. From the sacrifice, they stole a train that went directly into the airport and filled it with bombs. Okay, the reason this isn't in the list is because it doesn't fit the list really, because everything else in this list flies. And although a train may fly along the line, it doesn't really leave the ground. At least you'd hope it wouldn't in any reasonable world. But it was still quite a notable action that they managed to steal this from the Irks and just fill it with bombs and take it directly into the Irk pool. So quite notable for that. Uh, but yeah, because it's a train, it doesn't quite make the list. And then the Helmicron's return, uh, the suspicion. It's very similar to the last time, except the, the Helmicron's didn't just give up their vessel for no reason. They surrendered and the Animorphs took advantage of that to unshrink themselves using the shrink stuff. So again, not that notable. But it's still another example of the Yerks stealing some sort of craft. Okay, so let's get to number one, and it comes from the beginning. And this is notable because it's basically the end of the war. They steal the pool ship. Not so much steal, but take control of the pool ship. And it's number one on the list because it is the final act of the series. It's what everything has basically built up to in this series. It's, it drags out through a large portion of books 53 and 54. It's really well written. I really enjoyed it. And it's just very nice to have what amounted to, to me, to be a satisfying payoff to the Animal series. They got that pool ship and that was great and I loved it. And it's nice to finish this list on a positive because let's face it, there's a lot of shit in this list. <laughs> Some very good moments, but this is probably the standout one where they took the pool ship and I would say it was a happy ending, but no, not really. For Earth it was. And for all the freed slaves, it was a, a happy ending. Not so much for the animals in, in a variety of ways, which, you know, go see my review of Book 54 for more information on that. But yeah, the biggest example of craft being taken by the Animorphs, and it is suitably at number one on this list. There may even be examples that I've missed out of all this, but it was quite a thing in Animorphs, wasn't it? Oh look, a Yerk ship just sitting here. Let's take that and use it as a plot device. Why don't we do that, gang? On we pop. It happened a lot. And it did become very noticeable to me, hence why I've done this video. And I've actually had this one planned for quite a while. It's nice to finally be able to do it. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. But that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you the facts, but also the fun. Facts and fun. That's what you're getting on this channel. And a lot of British stuff, I imagine. And a lot of rambling, which is what I seem to be doing now. So I'm just going to end the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. See you later.